Welcome to Haynes Flat Baptist Church. Uh, truly excited to be in the house of the Lord today. And I just pray that you and your family still continue to be well and safe during all this. Um, I pray that um, you're just praying for our church members in, the, in our community, in our, in our area. Uh, we do have some folks in our church. Uh, their families have tested positive. And um, prayerfully, it's just a mild case right now. And we're praying for deliverance of this. And uh, so not only their families, but their children. And so we do pray for them and pray that God continues to protect uh, our church members and our church bodies, as well as our community, as well as those that's in the school systems and all. It's, it's just an harm's way every day. And just pray that God can deliver this COVID pandemic as soon as possible. Um, we did discuss um, this upcoming uh Few day, few weeks with what we're going to do with the in-service meetings as of right now with our numbers in our community, and it's still spreading. Uh, we are going to continue to do online services through Facebook and YouTube, um, at least through February. Um, we will try to make adjustments if if need be uh, through mid February, um, and we'll try to get the word out if we decide to start before March. Uh, but the majority of the deacons and I have met and, and discussed, and we feel like it's just safe to make the safest call for our church right now. And um, so we're gonna be still uploading um, our Sunday school hour as well as our preaching hour. And I just pray that uh, God continues to reign during all this time. And we're truly blessed today to have uh, Miss Natalie Davis gonna sing special music. And I know that it'll be a blessing to you. And we do have, uh, we're, we're honored as well to have Miss Amanda uh, Dunn and Miss Mary Ann Bolton uh, helping lead worship music uh, with us today. So. I know that you're excited and blessed to be in the house of the Lord, and, and I just pray that God has given you an extra blessing uh, today, wherever you may be and what's going on, and Haynes Flat is still being Haynes Flat. I can't wait to share what God is doing and has done even this past week just by taking care of those that need to be taken care of, and, and that's what we should be doing. So uh, it's truly a blessing. Uh, God is is good all the time and all the time God is good so um, I just hope and pray that um, you're doing awesome and I can't wait to have fellowship with you once again and so let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll see what God has in store for us today Lord I love you and praise you and just thank you for another day of life just grants to live and the ability to gather in your house to worship your name and the only name under heaven which men can be saved I just pray that you will be with the singing and Sister Amanda, Mary Ann plays, and bless this service, bless me as your messenger and mouthpiece, God, that you'll just challenge me to charge me to be inspired, encourage others to share the gospel before it's too late. Continue to be with a special, Lord, be with Miss Natalie as she sings, that it will be a blessing to someone that hears it. And God, they'll not just hear us, God, but they'll feel the Spirit speaking to them. And if someone needs to be saved, God, please let them uh, turn to you and accept you before it's too late or someone's drawn cold or weary. I know there's others that's struggling. God, I know there's people that's facing this COVID uh, pandemic right now in their very home and they're worried and they're scared and they're anxious and, and, and it's in having quarantines and having thoughts of how can they handle this and how can they protect themselves and protect their family and others and just a lot of questions, God. I pray that you'll just give peace that surpasses all understanding that, that only you can give. The peace, not what earth can give, but God can give. And put a head of protection upon those homes and families. And I just pray deliverance of this virus, deliverance of uh, this just in our area, especially, God, that you'll just send revival. Sin revival, sin revival. Be with this service, God. Just have your way with it. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Sister Amanda. Good morning. We're going to start worship uh, with a song that we love to sing here at Haynes Flat. Uh, the family of God. We're going to sing it a couple times. I encourage you to sing with us at home. So good.
to sing Sin the Lot. Praise the Lord. Appreciate that, ladies. Beautiful song. Um, we're going to have a special singer coming, Miss Natalie Davis, and she's going to be singing a song, What a Beautiful Name. And uh, there is a scripture verse uh, that, that's during their song, and, and it was part of her uh, singing. And I want to read this verse, these two verses, uh, nine, two, or actually three verses, Philippians 2. 9, 10, and 11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And this time, Miss Natalie Davis is going to come sing a beautiful song for you. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know that was a blessing to you. It was a blessing to us this evening and today and wherever you may be. And, and let's pray that uh, that you're just excited to see what God has got in store during all this. And I can't wait for revival to break forth not only in our church but our community and, and our land as well. Uh, if, we're going to be going to the book of Romans chapter 1 this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you may be watching this and pray uh, that God will speak to, speak to you as much as he spoke to me as we look in the book of Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 1 is where we're going to begin. Are you, if you're in Romans chapter 1, say amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll see what God has in store for us. God, I love you. I do thank you. Thank you for the beautiful singing we've already heard and how much of a blessing it is. And we realize the only name under heaven in which men can be saved is Jesus Christ alone. And I just praise you and thank you. And Lord, I just pray right now that as we get in the book of Romans, that God, it, it not be uh, Travis Dunn that we're hearing, but we hear the words of God. And I just pray right now that I pray that you'll just take this message and speak volumes. God, just... I know how powerful it is on my heart, and I know that uh, how how meaningful it has been in the last few days I've been studying and looking at it, and I just pray that you'll give me the recall I need and the confidence to, to proclaim the gospel here, and, and not only that, just to proclaim it a, uh, in a church house that I can proclaim the good news to a world uh, every day, that other people can see Jesus in me, that I can be a light uh, to this to this darkened time that people cannot see me, but they can see Jesus. God, I just pray right now that you use me as your mouthpiece, use me as your hands, your feet, and your messenger. I just pray if someone deeply needs to be saved, today can be that day of salvation. Somebody needs to rededicate their life, repent, turn back toward the direction of following, obedient you. They can do that today. And Lord, the Bible tells us what is pretty much we're not promised tomorrow. So, God, we need to do it today. And I just pray right now that if there's family struggling, that you'll just, Lord, just send uh, send an extra blessing to them. Send grace and mercy and and peace, especially to their, their homes just now. Wrap your loving arms around us. Give us a holy hug as we're watching and, and listening to the sound of my voice here this time. To let us know we love one another. We're praying for each other, encouraging one another. And I just pray that Jesus will get the glory for it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The title today is When in Rome... Do as the Romans do, and some of you may have heard this before. It's a, it's a, it's an old proverb, uh, kind of been put out by Saint Augustine, I believe. Is kind of gets the uh, respectful thing of it, but uh, we're going to look in Romans chapter one here today, and. It says, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And a lot of people can look at this thing different. Um, when you think of what was going on in Rome when Paul was writing to, uh, to the Romans, um, we're going to read a little bit of scripture about this. And I think some of your mindset may be where my mindset is, is thinking Rome was crazy and it was full of sin and it was just chaos and chaotic. It was, but there was something more greater going on in Rome that God's word shows us and it tells us. And it's powerful to me that Paul had not even been to Rome. He had not been to Italy. He had not been to this area by the time God inspired him to write these words. God had put it on his heart. He was uh, probably about as on his second missionary journey. He wanted to go to Rome, which we're going to read here tonight. Um, and he had it on his heart. He got word that these people were on fire for Jesus Christ. He didn't start the church. They didn't have a mega church they were attending. They were actually meeting in small groups and, and house to house to house. Very, type, very typical or similar might be what's going on to this very day and age. What's going on in 2021, we're having church not in an in-church meeting. We're having, a meet, having church in our own house. And so, so Paul gets uh, led by the Holy Spirit and God's put it on his heart to read uh, or to, to share the scriptures. And when you think about Romans, Romans is the first epistle in God's written word that Paul writes. And then after Romans, it gets to all the churches that he helped establish and he starts writing to these churches and helping them. But if you look at the book of Romans, how powerful it is, it talks about the foundations of salvation. It talks about justification of grace. It talks about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It talks about the theology of that Paul's writing is so deep and so, so prevalent 
uh, to these people that he's writing to because he knew that the, the Christians that were in Rome, they were going to face persecution. They were going to face obstacles. They were going to face people that were teaching false doctrine. And he lays the foundation out in the book of Romans. How beautiful is that? And we just read Romans and think, oh, it's just talking about how to be saved and how to, how to not follow the law, but how to follow Jesus. There's more to it than that. It's beautiful, folks. God's Word is so alive. It's so alive. Read it. Let it make you alive in Christ. Let you get so inspired that you want to share some good news. If, if there's ever a time we need good news, it's today. Cut your TV off, cut your uh, phone, put your phone down and open God's Word and share God's Word with somebody. Just this very day, I got to share Scripture in a text back and forth between a brother of mine that's just struggling. He sent me text saying, he sent me a text using Scripture to say thank you. I sent him Scripture back saying we were just being the church, doing what the church of Acts did. They sold everything they had and they took care of the needs. And that's just what we need to be doing. So do as the Romans do. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You know, a lot of times we want to just go with the crowd. We want to blend in. And truthfully and honestly, when you study what Rome was going on, Rome and Italy at this time, it was really easy to blend in because they had people that had different languages and their, their language and dialect at this time was easy to learn. It was easy to just blend in. And that's what a lot of people want to be. That's what we casual Christians. They want to be lukewarm. What's the scripture say about being lukewarm? He says, he don't want you to be casual. He don't want you to be lukewarm. He would rather just vomit you out. If it be, excuse me, if you be lukewarm. And so it, these people are easily blending in. Folks, we need to be, don't blend in with the world. Don't just do like the world's doing. We need to be like Christ. People ought to see a peculiar people, see a different people, see something that represents truth, somebody that represents the light, somebody that represents Jesus Christ. That's what he has called us to do, not to be uh, like the world. There's a whole lot of things that <laughs> you can tell. And so we're going to talk about a reputation. We're going to be talking about an opportunity uh, to share the good news, an opportunity, not only that, that we are willing to share and proclaim Jesus Christ. So Paul is writing here in, in this first uh, writing to the Romans um, in verse 7 of chapter 1. I told you I've done preached a little intro there, so here we go. Um, Paul uh, writing to the Roman church and churches, the Christians in all this, and this is what it says in verse 6, I mean verse 7, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. This is who he's writing to. These are his brothers and sisters in Christ that are spread abroad. Um, how did they get there? It's just different things, different ideas. Maybe who helped show the some of them may have been at Pentecost. This is what we're thinking about here. Some of the, the different studies I read and things think that they could have brought it back. Uh, they could have been there and, and sharing the gospel. It could have been Jewish Christians that had, had grown back over. It could just be Christians that scattered. Who knows? But it was the Christians. The next verse is going to tell you what Paul got told. And they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have internets. They didn't have uh, camel mail, they didn't have snail mail, they didn't have any of this. All they had was word of mouth. And they had written word. And I think this is so powerful that they said this is probably the Roman epistle, the Roman writing is probably the first written uh, Christian literature that these Christians of Rome would have had. How powerful would that be? How much do we, how much do we cherish God's written word today? Could you imagine getting a, a, a written letter of them giving you the foundations of salvation, giving you handwritten letter of Paul himself under the leadership of God saying, this is what God shows you. Here is other scriptures that back it up. This is what they've got. Here it is. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ in verse 8 for you all. Not just, not just the, the hierarchies of the group, not just the low of the lows, all of them. Because why? We're all in the same team. We're all on the same, uh, we're all, all for Jesus. That's what he says. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And, and I think that is so powerful. And, and you know what? We live in a small town. 
in Speedwell, Tennessee. You know what? Do we want recognition of Haynes Flat Baptist Church? Pastor Travis Dunn, do I want to be known worldwide? Travis Dunn does not want to be worldwide. The church body, Haynes Flat, does not to be worldwide. But you know what needs to be worldwide is Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible tells us, to take the gospel to whosoever. Take it over. You know what, that's my biggest thing is we live uh, here in Speedwell, Tennessee, um, in Claiborne County, and there's a beautiful highway there. God's blessed us with a beautiful church. And, and I said, my heart and my passion is that people pass by and not just see a beautiful church, but they know there's something real here. Uh, and something real is going on. And, and I'll be honest with you, I know I've said this by the time, and I've heard it this this past week. There's people that just pull up in the parking lot, in the way parts hours of the evenings and the days and the nights, and just sit here and pray, come inside on this altar still, even with quarantine, still with things going on. God is still using this church body, this church building, this church property. God is still in control. He is able. He's not dead. Hello? He is on the throne, church, and I know that you feel it as much as I do. And Paul realized he got excited. He got inspired. He knew what was going on in Rome. It would have been easy to blend in with the world and go in with the crowd and just say, you know what, I'm just going to blend in. Do as the Romans do. I'm just going to blend in. He got word that these folks were on fire for Jesus in the midst of craziness and chaos of what was going on in the world. Folks, if there's ever a time that there's craziness and chaos going on in the world and Christians need to stand up, is today. We need to be a peculiar people. We don't need to blend in and just give in to what's going on in our society, in our world. I got a phone call earlier this morning saying, Preacher, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What's the Bible say? Well, what's the Bible say? It's red, black, and white in my Bible. I hope and pray it is yours too. What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? Romans 1 lays it out there. Folks had give over to the uh, normal natural affections of a man. They'd give over all that. I'm not preaching that today. But it's there, written in that. People were doing the things that they loved. They loved uh, being uh, Convincing theirself and justifying their sins and their actions to blend in with the world instead of being conformed and transformed. They were conforming to the image of the world instead of letting God transform them. That's what we need to do. Let God transform us. Quit conforming into the image of the world. Don't do just like everybody else does just because they're doing it. We need to reflect Jesus. That's what we are called to do. Paul got word that they were on fire for the Lord. Their faith was worldwide spoken of in Italy. How about that? And and it was kind of saying that that was kind of a a really, that's where everybody went. That was kind of the the cool place to go in in Rome because they had all kind of uh, amphitheaters. They had all kind of stuff coming and going. That was kind of the the Gatlinburgs and the Pigeon Forge and the Washington, D.C. Actually, they they compared that to the Washington, D.C. of of this era and this time. This is where everything was kind of going on, the Roman Empire. And this is where everybody was coming to get their information. But Paul got word of some awesome, awesome information. That these people were on fire for Jesus in the midst of craziness and chaos and a world filled in sin. You know what? That's my heart and my passion. That it's not about me, but it's all about him. How about you? What about our reputation? How is, would my reputation reflect Jesus? You know what? When they say something about me, does it reflect him? Does, when people talk about us, I, I'm not really worried. I, you know, I talked about it last week. We should be more concerned about the gospel than we are the gossip. I would rather people reflect Jesus and see the good in Travis Dunn instead of them picking on the negative and the bad. Haynes Flat is a church body. When people speak, I hope they don't drive by the church and say, Well, go down the road and talk about this church and that church. No, they, these people love the Lord and they're not ashamed of it. You know what, when people see, when they have a need, it's pretty powerful. To me, it's very encouraging because Jesus gets the glory for it. When people say, they call the church and they say, so-and-so told me to call you because you could help me. 
And if not, there was something wrong if you couldn't help me. That's powerful. Somebody that don't even belong here, that lives in the community, and maybe be on the other side of the river and gets word that Haynes Flat Baptist Church and Pastor Travis Dunn and that church body will help you if they can. And if they can't help you, they will find somebody to help you. That's reputation in the glory of God because why we're on the same team and that's what it's all about. And so there's, their faith of Jesus Christ is so known and becoming well known throughout the whole world. That's what we as Christians are looking for, that Jesus' gospel and good news be spread throughout the whole world. And so Paul here, he lays down the foundations of salvation. He talks about justification. He talks he was inspired. He was encouraged. Uh, he was praying for these people. He was, had a, uh, he, he was uh, longing to visit them, to witness with them, to encourage them and teach them physically. And so this is before uh, Paul was arrested. This is before the, uh, the, the shipwreck in Rome, uh, as he was headed to Rome. Uh, this is before he was in prison. So that's kind of where he ended up, even to where he was uh, possibly martyred um, in Rome at the later part of his life, probably when Nero came out and blamed all Christians uh, for the fire that broke forth um, about A.D. 64, if I recall right, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. So... He says this, verse 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, talking about Jesus, what, that without ceasing I make mention to you always in my prayer. Uh, we, have, we take every opportunity to pray for one another, to encourage one another, and that's what he is saying as well. Here he says in verse 10, Making request, if by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. His heart and his passion was to worship and share the gospel with other believers. That's what we should have. We should, have a, we should love one another. We should care for one another. We should have a concern for one another. We should be willing to share the good news with each other and glean from God's word. Not to argue or to have disagreements or fights. We ought to realize that we are on the same team. That we're not trying to debate and try to cause conflict. There's enough of that going on in the world. But Paul had a longing. He, had, he seen that these people were so on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ that he wanted to be a part of it. He wanted to encourage them. He wanted to physically show up and tell them what he knew. What God had showed them and had taught him. How powerful is that? You know what? That's what we ought to do as Christians. We ought to say, uh, it's awesome because um, just this very day, um, I've got a few phone calls or a few texts. And people will say, what are you doing, Pastor? And I say, I'm sitting here reading God's Word. And I say, how about you? He said, I'm getting ready to or she's getting ready to or uh, what have you been, what's God been showing you in the Bible this week? Have you opened your Bible this week? It's powerful. It's powerful. So much encouraging that I get those phone calls and they say, Oh, preacher, I was reading in the book of Acts and let me tell you what God was showing me. Preach it. Proclaim it. Let other people know that that's what you're putting in your mind and your heart, that it's got to come out. And you've got good news to share, not junk, not trash, not bad stuff that's going on in the world, not negative stuff that's going to beat you down and discourage you, but good news, the gospel. Woo, hello, everybody. Here we go. Verse 11, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. That's what he's saying. I want to come encourage you. I can't wait. That's what we miss in our church body, in our in-services. We, we miss the fellowship. We miss the encouragement with one another. To hold each other accountable to say, Hey, brother, hey, sister, I missed you in church this Sunday. I missed you in our Sunday school class. I missed you in our Wednesday night class. Are you doing okay? We have discernment of the Holy Spirit to say, Are you okay? Are you making good choices? You, you mentioned a prayer request for your son or your daughter. How can I help in that? How can we do that? This is where Paul was. Paul realized that he was on the same team that his brothers and sisters in Christ was growing in the Lord and he didn't want the false teachers and the wrong people to turn them away that they would be swallowed up by doing as the Romans went in Rome, do as the Romans do. Don't get into the false doctrine. Don't get easily swooed by those that are misusing God's word. And so uh, Paul writes and he goes on. He says, I want to encourage you and I want to stir up 
your spirit even more. Get you more on fire for Jesus. I want to help you, not drag you down and discourage you. I want to give you all you need to keep on persevering and keep on keeping on. And so I love it. In verse 12, he says, That is, I may be comforted together with you by mutual faith, bond uh, both of you and me. He says, we're going to be a blessing to one another. We're going to come fellowship one with another. We're going to have church together. I'm going to worship with you. I'm encouraged to, to make me think about some missionaries that go to some of these foreign countries that kind of have underground churches. And they worship together and just show up out on the beach shore sometimes at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And all they do is uh, walk out on the beach shore at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And they say, you'll go find a man in a white shirt in a foreign country. Happened to one of our missionaries that uh, spent the night in my house. He told me, he said, I walked on the beach at 4 o'clock in the morning. He said, I see a man with a white shirt on. And I said, I hope that's the right one. He said, I walked to him and he said, are you so-and-so? And they said, yep. And he said, are you so-and-so? He said, yep. He said, come on down. He said, we want you to be part of our church service. And he said, okay. He said, what's going on? He says, we're at the, at the beach. He said, we're getting ready to have a baptism at 4 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because they can't do it in public. Would you show up at church for a baptism at 4 o'clock in the morning? Because of what's going on in the world in which you live? Hmm. How blessed are we to live where we do that we could have church 24 hours a day? Mm -mm -mm. Paul says, I want to come be a part of you. I want to be, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage your church. And that's what he does. He, his heart, his passion had changed. He was into, the, into a call to killing Christians. And now he is being willing to be killed for Christ. And this is what, even to this very letter of Romans and God uses him in the epistles. It makes full circle that even he is probably martyred in Rome. First letter and probably the later, uh, that's probably where he was willing to die for Jesus. So God had a plan. And it's, it's powerful. Look at what he says. He says in verse 13, Now that I not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come to you, but I was let hitherto. Uh, he says that I might have some fruit among you also, even as uh, among other Gentiles. He says, I, not that I'm making excuses that I wanted to come, but God kind of led me here or led me there. If you look at Paul's journeys, uh, he did travel near Italy a few times, but God directed him here, and God was, uh, it wasn't his timing to go there. And so he just let God lead him wherever. And that's sometimes what we need to do. You know, my heart and my prayer is that God will use me. Let, him, let me, you know, be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece. I, I just this very week, God uh, used our church to help another brother uh, and family that was, you know, we'd just be able to bless them this week. And, and not only that, uh, you know, I, I run across a young man that I know that's homeless. I know he's living in the woods. I run across him and didn't get within six feet of him or anything like that. I had my mask on and he was walking and I gave him a ride in the back of my truck. I didn't let him get in my truck. I said, with the virus going on, just, well, I'll give you a ride to the dollar store. And he said, brother, you got any change? I keep a change bag in my truck. God said, give him the bag and tell him God loves you. Because I know that God's dealing with him. God's working with my man. I've already know the history of that situation. So God, I gave him the bag, and he said, bless you, bless you, bless you. You see how we can take something as just a few cents and be a blessing to somebody. Because why? God wants to use me. He wants to use you. You know, we can do it still in a safe way or wearing our mask or keeping our distance, whatever it may be. And I think that's where God gets the glory for it all. You know what? Did I need that change? Did my kids probably want that change to go to school with? Probably so. Probably so. But... I was obedient to the Lord and God blessed in just the same way. We've got to be, it's not mine, it's all his anyway. And so use it to the glory of God. That's what we need to do in the church of the early churches. What they do, they sold everything they had and took care of those that needed it. That's where we were at. So he says, I don't want you to realize that I was just not coming to you for whatever reason. He says, he says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, talking about the Gentiles as well. He says, I, I, I'm both to the wise and unwise. We don't have to be, uh, Paul is telling them, he says, um, I have a great obligation. This is the new living. It says of people in the culture to people in other cultures, to the educated and the uneducated. Um, and I think that's where our heart is. We need to realize that we are no better than anybody else.
We are all sinners in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Don't do like the majority of the world is doing. Look at the foundations of the book of Rome, what was going on. Their faith was being spoke of worldwide. They weren't making a big name for themselves. They was making a big name for who? Jesus Christ. That's where pride, there's a difference between being humble and obedient and versus being prideful and arrogant and seeing fall come before them. And so Paul realized that. He says, I'm a debtor to them. I'm, I'm obligated to share the gospel. I'm, I've been, that's his calling. That's where his heart is. That's where his passion was to go anywhere and everywhere. We have a willingness to minister to people in need. We have a concern for the love of our neighbor. That's what it says, to love our neighbors, we love ourselves, right? Be willing to tell others Jesus loved them, died for them, can save them, wants to spend eternity with them forever and ever and ever. I like verse 15. Love it. So, comma, as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. Where is your Rome? Is it in Tennessee? Is it right out your back door? Is it in South Carolina, North Carolina, Texas? Is it in California, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Georgia, Florida? Where is it? Where is your Rome? So as much as is in me is, Paul realized that he had full of Jesus in him. And he knew in his heart of hearts that this is what he was ready to do was proclaim, tell others the good news, share the good news with brothers and sisters in Christ to help encourage them, help encourage that other church and multiple churches going on here in Rome. That's what we should do as the body of believers in 2021, not be concerned about our own personal self, but we need to encourage other churches and church brothers and sisters in Christ throughout our area and our land to don't quit, don't throw in the towel, don't get discouraged and, and feel defeated. God is able. God is the sustainer of it all. He is the one that's in control of it all. Don't get down and disheartened. And even Paul tells him, in Romans, read it. It's powerful. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody's perfect except Jesus Christ. Nobody. We do the things that we shouldn't do. Paul says it in Romans 7. Not only that, he goes on in Romans 10. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's in there. We, don't, we, we can't do anything. It's all in there. Romans 6, 23. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It goes on. It's, it's what he goes on. Romans 8, and it says what? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody, right? That's what it says. Nothing, nothing, nor height, nor death, or any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of our God, which is the Christ our Lord. Lord, We are his special children. We are his children of God. And not only that, does he just get so in-depth, so powerful, uh, that we are his remnant. God is, is making us his called uh, people. To, he's called us to share the gospel. That's what our mission field is. And Paul gives a great foundation in the book of Romans. If you've not read it like that, slow down, go back and read it. And think, hey, he has given this early churches the foundations of what we need for salvation, for justification, uh, the, the doctrinal uh, study there, how powerful it is. Look at it. And all it starts out with Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. That's what we are, just a slave unto our Lord and Savior, our master, our servant, and we're called to serve him, called to share the gospel. How does it look? It can just be living a quiet, quaint life and, and being, per, being, uh, being obedient and studying the short self approved. We can be the only Bible people read. And he says, so as much as in me is, I like that extra word, is. If you've got Jesus in your soul and Jesus in your heart, the Holy Spirit's going to have to, it's going to stir you up and you just can't do nothing but burst and tell people the good news in the gospel. And if you need Jesus to restore that joy of your salvation and stir you back up, maybe you need to be encouraged, excuse me, encouraging other people to stir, uh, be stirred up as well. And that's what he says, I'm eager to t share the gospel with you. We ought to be eager to share the gospel. 
with others before it's too late. Are we willing? Are we just doing as the Romans do and blending in with the world? And saying, woe is me, look at all this. We can't even go to church. We can't even have Sunday school. We can't go to church because of the virus going around. You know what? Churches were pretty much as we're a body of believers. You know what? We can God's made technology that believers can get together by phone, by text, by various ways. You can still talk to somebody and be six foot apart and carry a mask and say, Hey, let's talk about Jesus together. There's ways around it. There's ways to share the good news. Various ways. So as as much as is in uh, as much as, as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel. And then he goes on to verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I, I want you to say this with me. Just the first part of verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let's do it all together. I'm going to count to three and let's say it together. One, two, three. For I am not ashamed of of the gospel of Christ. Mm. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Are you? Am I? What does it mean to be ashamed of the gospel? It means you're not willing to share it. That you are, if you're ashamed of something, you don't tell anybody about it. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Do we hide it under a bushel? No. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What is in me, I'm going to let it shine into this darkened world in which we live. I'm not going to blend in. I'm not going to conform. That's in there, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Don't be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the remuneration of our mind. That he, That's where it's at. How powerful God's Word just comes together. This is where Paul's heart was, and he gives God uses that to show it in our writing and gives us that encouragement day by day by day. The power and the salvation. He's the only one worthy to save. As Miss Natalie sung, that's what the name of Jesus Christ is the only one worthy. He is the one perfect. He is holy. He is the only one that can be the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he says, whosoever is everyone that believeth, and that's what it says, the Jew first, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Folks, are we... Um, we are, we are called, uh, we, we have a reputation to reflect Jesus. We have an opportunity to share Jesus. We are willing to minister and show concern and be Jesus to a lost and dying world. But not only that, to minister to our brothers and sisters in Christ on a daily basis to take care of them in need as well. That's our, that's our call. That's our duty. Uh, that's what God has called us to do, to uh, take care of the saints, take care of the orphans and the widows and all those in need. That's what we need to do. And we're, we're called to proclaim. That means herald or preach uh, the gospel the good news to a lost and dying world not only that we need to encourage the good news to our brothers and sisters in Christ because I don't know about you but I need encouragement and you need encouragement even if you put on a fake smile and act like everything's okay we all need to be encouraged. We all need to be lifted up. We all need to be encouraged by God's words and saying, you know what, preacher, I appreciate that message Sunday. I appreciate the singing. I appreciate the special. I appreciate uh, Brother Chris and Brother David and Mary Ann and Amanda and everybody helping out do what we're doing on a week in and week uh, basis for the glory of God. A little encouragement goes a long way. It's kind of just like it's kind of like an extra pick me up. It's like it's just like a, a, a just like a encourage of Graham. It's kind of like getting a letter in the mail, knowing somebody's caring about you. Don't have to be any money in the in the, in the card, but uh, my little girl just turned six, and she all she wanted was cards in the mail, and I bet she's got fifty of them. And she was tickled to death. And today she said, "Did I get in her her birthday was a few days ago?" And she said, "Did I get any mail today?" She was so excited to get cards in the mail. And I thank y'all for encouraging my little girl. And, and you know what? That's all it takes. It's just a little bitty things in life can go a long way. A little as much as when God's in it. How true is that? For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. And this right here, listen to this. This God, good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. 
from faith to faith, from beginning to end, from beginning to end, from finish, from start to finish. How beautiful. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. How does he finish? Romans 16, how does he finish? He goes greeting his friends of the church. He goes bringing salutation, encouragement. Greet this person and that person that he's hearing great things. And he's saying even on this side of his, it's kind of like an encouraging letter that he is writing to these Christians that are in Rome and in Italy in that area. And he tells them, and that's how he finishes it. But listen to this, the last three verses, Romans 16, 25 through 27, after he goes and he brags on these people and he says, thank you for everything that you're doing. Hello, look how real that speaks to 2021, just like what God's Word is speaking. It is alive. Not that it was written uh, over thousands of years ago and it covered many a ground. God is still alive and He's using me and He's using you to share encouragement in the gospel to a lost and dying world. Listen to this powerful scripture. He says, he kind of goes on, he has some amens through there. And verse 25, Now to him that is power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery uh, which is uh, kept secret since the world began. He's saying, God is able to make you strong. This is a translation. Uh, just as the good news says it is. God is able. He is still on the throne. He is God is able. He is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And the message, the good news is about Jesus. That simple. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Jesus forgives, Jesus forgives, Jesus forgives. And he says, this mystery was hidden, and now it's revealed. And Paul has been able to reveal this mystery. He is being able to, he is being part of the, uh, the Jesus Christ gospel, the ministry. And he tells us in 26, but now is made manifest, which means it is made alive. God's word is alive. It's came to life. The Messiah, the Son of God, he is, he's risen. He's, he's the Savior of the world. He says, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Who does Paul write to? He writes to the Christians that's in Italy and Rome. In the midst of craziness and chaos and full of sin, coming and going, people that are conformed, conformed, conformed. In the, in the midst of, of, of different things going on, that's where the Roman Empire was set up. That's where they had corrupt government going on at this time. Didn't make that up. It's in there. Read it. It's in there. What's going on with our government today? Corrupt. Why? Because of sin. Any different? Any different than what was going on when Paul was writing? No. God is able. God is in control. If my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We've been getting there. What does he say here? He says, to God only wise. To God be the glory. It's only in God's hands. And Paul gives all account to him. Not how smart how Paul is, not that Paul had uh, had a could he he had a citizenship of the Romans. He didn't he didn't push all that in there when he was arrested. He he did bring that up, and the Romans came and 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 kind of rescued him during all that because they knew who Paul was. But he didn't bring all that up because he brings up it's all about him and it's not about us. I don't know where you're at in your relationship with the Lord. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Don't blend in. Don't conform. Be transformed. I'm going to read those verses real quick. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Powerful. Right in the middle of the, the book, the letter that he's written, the epistles to the church members. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So we be a many or one body in Christ and every one member is one of another. And he talks about what God has called us to do. How powerful is God's word, folks? What does our reputation speak of? Is it 
somebody that's just got a lot of money and does a great things or does it reflect Jesus Christ? Don't matter if our reputation may have been terrible years ago. You know what? Just come out and say, hey, I messed up. I made mistakes, but I'm following God now. Forgive me for I've messed up. God's forgiven me, and I pray that you can forgive me too. That's the love of God. Let the reputation of Jesus reflect him. Not only that, does my, do we take the opportunity to share Jesus and the good news? Not only that, are we willing to minister? Are we willing to be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece in which God has called us to be? And lastly, are we willing to proclaim? Are we willing to proclaim the good news or are we ashamed? Are we willing to proclaim the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ or are we ashamed of it? I've already read, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How about you? Folks, who are we going to encourage? Who are we going to inspire? Folks, who is watching us? Who is listening to get some encouraging words somewhere throughout the world to know that somewhere you didn't quit and I didn't quit and we didn't throw in the towel that God is able. He's still on the throne. He still saves. He still forgives. He still uses an old sinner like me. He still uses an old sinner like you. And he is going to get all the glory for it. Let's pray. God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for the power of your word, how awesome it is. I thank you for inspiring many, many women in God's word and many people over the years to continue on, to keep on keeping on. No matter how corrupt our government may be, no matter how, how times may get hard, how, many, how, how money may get tight, how much sicknesses may be breaking forth, how many viruses may be going forth, people didn't quit. They kept trusting in you and keep on pressing on. God, I pray right now that if someone's listening here today, that they'll get in your word. They'll not be ashamed of the gospel. They'll realize how powerful your word is, that they can study and rightly divide in the word of truth, God, not, and to be found a workman in your, in your word. God, use us. Use our church. Use our messages. Uh, God, to take it out through Facebook and YouTube and wherever it may be go, Lord, throughout the world, that we'll see souls saved and lives changed. God, let us inspire others. Let us encourage one another, not only in our church body, God, but the body of Christ throughout the whole world that others can be encouraged. God, I love you. I praise you. I just thank you for this message. I thank you for this service. And I just pray that you'll get all the glory for it all because, Lord, I know it's not about me, but it's about the, the name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen.